much. Can you hear me? Can you all hear me? Okay. I start my speech with this quote by William Jennings Bryan. It says, destiny is not a matter of cho chance, but a matter of choice. It's not a thing to be waited for, but a thing to be achieved. I chose this quote because the word destiny is very strongly connected with disability. I mean, how often we see people tell us that, oh God, it's your destiny that you have to endure disability. But the reality, according to this quote, is that you can use life as a, an empty sheet and use your determination and foresight as writing implements to create your own destiny. I mean, as a writer, I don't think of a better an analogy than this. Life is like a blank sheet given to us when we were born, and we almost decide what's written on it. But there's something that is not in our control. If you think of it, the direction that our life takes is not in our control. I mean, some people say that it is far beyond you know, the control of uh, a man's lifetime. It's determined somewhere else. We don't know about all that. But what is sure is that the direction that your life takes determines your experience, determines how you look at life, your perspective of life. Ladies and gentlemen, retinitis pigmentosa, I mean, which everybody thinks has blinded me, is actually the event that spun my life in a different direction. I was a normal kid with normal ambitions. I mean, I'm using the word normal here with a, a tinge of sarcasm. I mean, if, you, if anybody misses it. Um, but I was not destined to be normal. I was destined to be something different. I mean, you can ask me if I'm anything abnormal or special or super special, no. But my perspective of life completely changed by that one event, when I discovered retinitis pigmentosa, when I was 16. Okay, there is this Tamil poet called Subramanya Bharati. He wrote, if you trade a pair of eyes for a beautiful picture, don't the world laugh at you clapping its hands? I mean, when I say that I'm a writer who can't see, that's how it appears to some people. But I must tell you that the day I discovered writing is also the day my direction was set. Retinitis pigmentosa not only change, I mean, not only determine my, my career or, or a choice of work, but it also changed my experience of life, understanding of life as I keep describing. And I should say that my understanding of disability went through a change by itself. Because as children, we see disability um, around us as mere spectators. We don't participate in anybody's disability. We just look at it from a distance, like probably how somebody watches uh, you know, fish on an aquarium. You know, we don't really participate. They are just there reading their lives, and we are just here living our lives. That changed. I'm compelled to learn the challenges, learn ways to tackle the challenges, and understand disability in a far more insightful way than you know, it is usual. So that way, you know, disability has a, uh, you know, uh, it, it brought a change. It brought a perspective of, of difference which I can understand. And as a person standing here with experience on both sides, I mean, as a person who is able-bodied and uh, able to carry on with my life with lots of dreams, and a person with disability, a writer, and, uh, you know, tackling challenges. So what does it make me understand? It makes me understand that I've suddenly become an insider from an outsider. A person with disability is basically someone who becomes an insider to a community which is offering you a completely exciting and different perspective of life. 
Of course, the idea of inclusion is laudable. I appreciate people who have taken the initiative. But I think it is important for all of us to understand the fact that inclusion is not an academic theory. Inclusion is not a legal requirement. Inclusion is an experience. There is uh, a professor of mine who used to say that there is a man in every woman. I mean, of course, it's not, uh, I don't know if it's politically correct to exactly say what he said. He said, there is an Adam in every madam. And there is a he in every she. There is anger in every danger. Okay. Now, my life experience has taught me that there is ability in every disability. So, you cannot remove ability from disability. So, what does it suggest? It only suggests to us that there is only a change in perspective. But life as such is normal. Okay, now that I've told you that I'm an insider, those of you who think that I stand here, or people like me stand here, to create inspiration and generate motivation, as if there's a power generator generating electricity, I'd like to tell you one thing. You know, it's an insider's secret. And I'm not in the stock market, so I can reveal the insider's secret without getting caught. Um, that we pretty much chase things, all of you chase. We pretty much, you know, try the kind of approaches that all of you, you know, adopt. And we fail. We're not ashamed of it, we fail. What is important here, though, is the fact that we learn to laugh at ourselves. And humor is pretty much a part of our lives. So disability, apart from its challenges, presents to us the unique ability to have fun in our daily lives, which you people cannot even imagine. I'll give you an example. There's this friend of mine and I, you know, it's about 20 years back, and uh, we were standing in a um, in an ice cream vending stall and we were having ice cream from a plate. And of course, you know that, you know, the problem with pe people who are vision challenged is that we get absorbed. And we were absorbed uh, in, in a topic of discussion and which ranged from uh, film music to international politics. And, um, you know, we were eating the ice cream just as a, a chore. You know, you, you do something because, you know, it's there to be done. So, and then it tasted weird. In fact, he didn't taste anything at all. And in fact, we commented on it. I told him that, you know, look, this is not tasting anything. And then somebody came to us and said that, see, you're eating the tissue and not the ice cream. The ice cream is melting away. <laughs> and then to that person's horror, we laughed at it. We started laughing at it aloud. And, uh, you know, so there is humor. There is fun in every way you turn if you're a disabled person. Of course, there are challenges. And, Tell me whose life has got no challenge here. I mean, all of us have challenge of some kind. So, now, when I look at it, the idea of inclusion, as I said, is an idea of experience, you know. Um, I mean, I'm not going exactly by my slide because I'm talking, um, you know, impromptu here. Um, but there is this Ottoman experience that I've, I've, I've pr presented as a slide. I must tell you this, it's an interesting thing. I was, traveling, you know, having a bumpy ride uh, in the Shivajinagar by lanes with an auto driver. And uh, see, everybody is curious about a person with disability. That's, that's something that starts an interaction. Many people think that they are nosy, but they're not. They're curious, like anybody else. So this person asked me, what do you do for a living? And I told him that I'm a writer. And I think he was stunned. He was shocked. And then he was quiet for some time. And then he asked me, how can you be a writer? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> come on. I mean, I was like, what do you mean? I'm a writer. Then it occurred to me, okay, this man has a different picture of a writer, you know? A man who's sitting behind the desk, scratching away, you know, to glory. That's his idea of writing. Or probably maybe, you know, in front of a computer, peering into the screen. I'm sure he hasn't had the idea that a person has a voiceover system talking to him, telling him what's on the screen, that's not how we assume a writer to be. 
Now, why I describe this experience is because in spite of our goal to make the world inclusive, what we have is this invisible Berlin Wall, wherever you go. The gap that is existing today between experience and reality. Ladies and gentlemen, don't you reflect on this, you know, I would like you to reflect on this. And you know that not all our experiences are complete. Not all our ideas are adequate. Okay, why? Because our perspective of life only takes at one particular angle of life, one particular profile of life. It doesn't cover the 360 degree idea. I mean, educated people, even engineers can think of a 360 degree perspective, but not a man who is riding autos in the bylanes of Shivajinagar. You don't expect that to happen to him. So, what are we talking about here? If inclusion is such a difficult thing, and of course, if you want a statistical detail as to why inclusion is difficult, the latest census suggests that only there are uh, about 2 million, 2.6 million, or round about that, persons with disability in this country. And what's our population? It's a drop in the ocean, literally. It's a dro drop in the ocean. So there is this 95% possibility that a person grows up without meeting a person with disability. And even if he happens to see, or if, even if she happens to see a person with disability, we'll be watching that person from a distance. Like, you know, the wild horses or, you know, wild elephants walking, you know, uh, in Bandipur forest. You'll be watching it from a distance. You won't be participating there uh, in their quests. So, disability is such a, an experience that everybody can't experience. So, I came up with this idea. I'm presenting this idea because this happens to be Inclusion Summit and we're talking about inclusion in such a deep, passionate and with a sincere way. I was discussing the same problem with a friend of mine, you know, she was talking about, you know, she, she, she was reminded of, uh, you know, speed dating that happens in the United States. You know, a group of 10, uh, 15 people sitting in, in different tables spread out in a room and there are a group of people who walk in and uh, choose, you know, a table at random sit next to the person and you see there is an exchange of idea happening, you know, there's a relationship blossoming. But now replace that speed dating with speed meeting, you know. Imagine a group of persons with disability seated in different tables and a group of uh, able-bodied persons just walk in and choose their partner. And, you know, that's going to create ideas, that's going to create exciting possibilities. This could be a social experiment. And I'm just giving this as an example. It could, it could be implemented in any way. You know, you can invite a person with disability for a tour, a trip that you're making abroad or, you know, probably in India, um, you know, probably to your neighborhood or, you know, make your life inclusive. I think inclusion, like, you know, anything else, starts at home. And, you know, an inclusive experience is all it takes to make the society, the world, the workplace, and everything else inclusive. Thanks for the opportunity. And I have a, 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 a sort of a write-up of my presentation. If you're interested, I can probably forward it to anybody who is interested. Thank you very much for the organizers, for the opportunity. Thank you for the patient hearing. Thank you very much. And in case anybody is interested, my book, Lights Out, is available outside. I'll be very happy to you know, sign and present the copy to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mani. That was so insightful. And he uh, ended up with uh, speed dating, right? It stuck to my head. But anyway, I'll come back to that later. Uh, Mani's beautiful website has a very nice quote, right? Life with limitations and disabilities as human beings. Isn't it so powerful? <laughs>